welcome to your backyard. Today we're getting into the jungle. Hear that? It's the sound of the jungle. Whenever I enter the jungle, I like to, well, do the jungle check. I have on no shoes, only flip flops. Any snakes? I'm walking through the jungle I haven't walked through in a while. Any spider webs? Now this is imagined to be a jungle, it's the corner of my backyard, but I made it into a jungle by not leaving it as grass. I had a little pad here for our kayak. It's kind of like our little sacred space. My kids have all played back here. And it is also the space of a sacred plant to us, which is the cardboard plant. Have you heard of the cardboard plant? It's a thing. Check it out. It has really beautiful pattern. I think it's a type of sago. Sago is really, I think, the term they use to describe the pulp that comes out of a certain kind of plant, and this is one of them. Correct me if I'm wrong, internet, because I might be. Why would they call it the cardboard plant? Well, one reason is that it has the consistency of very, very rigid, like, cardstock. I don't know if you can hear that. It actually makes a sound and springs back, and if you, if you bend it, let's see if I can find a sacrificial thing here. Now, all of a sudden, it's important which one I wreck. Very odd. Oh, look at this! Oh, wow! Hey. All right, I won't get distracted, but if you listen to the sound it makes when you crunch the... No, I didn't do it. Well, on the more ripe ones like this one, if you crunch, you go... And that's because it's so fibrous. Incredibly fibrous. Well, this one had bloomed. This one has been very big. Right now, it's very small state. It'll grow super well, by the way, in shade or in sun, which is one of the reasons it's such a great indoor plant as well. This is a good example of a type of very ornamental tropical plant you could grow anywhere. You could grow this from Nebraska to Utah to San Antonio to Poughkeepsie, Niagara Falls, San Diego. Even on the base of Mount Olympus in a greenhouse you could grow this because it's so versatile. You just have to not let it freeze, give it sunlight, enough light, and enough water. <laughs> Well, hey, that's every plant, right? Okay, yes, right. So this plant was much, much bigger, and one thing that it speaks to its hardiness is that you can trim it down. So I do scorched earth on, earth on this plant. When it's time to rejuvenate, it gets too big, I take every single one off. You can correct me if that's some horrible atrocity towards card cardboard plant kind, but I've done that for years, and it always comes back more healthy more resilient. It's produced now, you see from a seed, it just dropped. I didn't plant it or anything, it just dropped onto the side, it produced an additional cardboard plant from the seed. Now's the time to dig that sucker up, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and dig that up, put it in a pot, just like the one you can order uh, online, if you want to get one of these. By the way, I'll, I'll leave uh, links in the description to where to get a cardboard plant quickly and easily. Get started on this journey. You know, there's, just, there's a lot of ways to start. You can plant seeds, Something like that. It takes a little while. Get one already made, start enjoying it right away, whatever. Point is, it's pretty cool to be the proud owner of a cardboard plant if you know how to treat it right. And I've been treating this right for years. Taking it back, bringing it back up, and look, it's growing like crazy. Look at this one growing. Isn't that interesting? Oh, these leaves are like very, very soft. That's cool. Look at that. Massive, massive. And I'll end up looking something like this. Look at this Mexican petunia plant, beautiful but just relentless. Relentless, can never get rid of it. Yeah, and I'm noticing too that now it's also sprouted more to the sides, so it's starting to expand a little bit. You know, you can control it. it, it will continue to expand just very slowly. Cardboard plant, it has that nice kind of low umbrella 
you know, thing that it does, which I really like. Uh, and there's no tougher leaf. I mean, I don't know of a tougher. Is there a more iron-clad leaf than that? You could almost use this as like a, a tool to scrape something with. I mean, it's really wild. And it's definitely a must-have in your yard. And it's also a close relative to a thing called zamia, which is something that looks like it, but doesn't have nearly the toughness. So here's, here's an example of that. Looks similar, right? But a little different. It still has fairly rigid, but nothing like what we were dealing with there. This one is also grown from seed. When they seed, they produce these bright red pods. And, uh, yeah, you just get those bright red seeds and stick them in the ground, and they pretty much grow. Always, for me, at least, in Florida. I have very loose sand. I mean, if you look at this sand, it is very loose ground. It is not that, really, that uh, rich, right? But I use a lot of uh, organic supplements like cow manure, compost, etc. By the way, I'll throw links into what I into the description to what I use, so you can see it, use it if so, you yeah. like. You might consider getting a cardboard plant. It might not look like this with the uh, sounds of the jungle, but it'll look pretty cool. I'm sure you can imagine where that would look good as like a potted plant or in your nursery or in your garden or whatever. So thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard and I appreciate you. Go ahead, subscribe, click the notification bell. That way you get notified as new videos are coming out. If you've noticed, I have increased the sophistication and frequency of them. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard.